Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and today Apple released iOS 15.6 beta one. This is currently available to developers and hopefully very soon to public beta testers. Usually by the time this video is posted, you should see it, or it could be the following day. Now this came in at a very large 5.42 gigabytes. That's on my iPhone 13 pro max. And it was about four to six gigabytes on all the devices here. So it's a pretty large install and that's typical. Anytime you go from a public version to a beta or from a beta back to a public version, it has to reinstall the whole OS. Now this is also available for iPad OS 15.6 beta one watch OS 8.7 beta one TV OS 15.6 beta one Mac OS 12.5 beta one and HomePod OS 15.6 beta one. All of those are available now. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then we'll go to general, then about, as you can see, the build number is 19 G five zero two seven E and this particular build being the first one, usually that letter will get closer to a, as we get closer to a final release. So we'll talk about when we could expect that closer to the end of the video, but first let's talk about what's new. Now, the first thing that's new has to do with a modem update. Now it's new, but it's sort of not new in the sense that on the 13 pro max with iOS, 15.5, we had build number 1.61.00. However, the modem update on 15.6 beta one has reverted back a little bit to 1.60.00. So it's gone in reverse a little bit. And sometimes we see this, maybe it's just a better version, but we'll have to wait and see over the next few days. As far as new features and changes, well, the first thing has to do with it's really in the code and looks like we're going to see it in the future. So thanks again to my friend, Steve Mosier. He found that in the code, maybe we'll have some controls for the keyboard in the future where we can actually hide the emoji search bar. So if I go into my messages, then maybe emoji here, emoji search is an option that may be able to be hidden later on. It's found in accessibility code, but so far we're not seeing a physical option for it. There's also additional code showing things such as accessory pairing string changes and more. So there's additional changes that they've made. However, there's a lot of changes that Apple said they're making soon with future versions of iOS. That's what I thought would be in this version. And you can actually see that on Apple's website. So you'll see it says Apple previews, innovative accessibility features, combining the power of hardware, software, and machine learning. These are some great accessibility features celebrating the global accessibility awareness day. So let me go over some of those things as those will be expected probably within beta two or beta three of iOS 15.6. So typically with the first betas, you're not going to see a huge amount of changes, but this is what I think will be in 15.6, if not iOS 16 as well. So the first thing is sign time will be launching on May 19th in Canada. Also accessibility assistant shortcuts are coming to shortcuts apps on Mac and Apple watch, and there will be updates to maps, music, books, and more to highlight accessibility options. So that's something we'll see, but the new features have to do with what accessibility can do in the future. So the first one is door detection. Apple actually shows this here in a little video where you can use your phone using the cameras as an accessibility feature to recognize a door in front of you helping low vision or blind users. Also, they're bringing live captions for audio content or streaming media throughout the OS. So that's actually something we've had on Android or they're bringing with Android 13 and you'll be able to actually have anything closed caption translated. So whether that be a conversation next to you and you use the microphone, something you're watching on YouTube or just other audio content, it should be able to translate that for you in real time. That's something they're bringing with this. Also, they're adding new voiceover languages and voices. So if you use voiceover and accessibility, they're bringing that. So voiceover will have new languages, things like Ukrainian and more. There'll be a lot more of that in the future. One thing that I think will be very helpful has to do with Apple watch. You'll have Apple watch mirroring. So you'll be able to mirror your Apple watch on your iPhone and then use your iPhone's accessibility features to maybe better control your Apple watch. It will connect directly to your watch and work that way. You'll also have quick actions on Apple watch with double pinch. So you'll be able to double pinch to do different gestures or do different things on the watch. There's also going to be a buddy controller option. So maybe you have a game you're playing and you need a little bit of help. You can pair two controllers at once so you can play the same exact character or maybe a race car in a video game you can play together if you need a little extra help. So that's something, and you'll see here's that double pinch here. So that's something we'll see in the future. And then you'll see here, we'll have Siri pause time. So it will allow you to wait a little bit longer before Siri responds. You'll have voice controlled spelling mode, 
sound recognition where we had this feature before with iOS 15, where your phone can actually recognize a sound and accessibility. So if you're not familiar with that, we can go down here, sound recognition. We can have it recognize a sound and let us know when that sound is incoming. We'll be able to customize this in the future so it will recognize any sound that we set. And then also Apple Books, this is something that might hint at iOS 16. If we go into books here, books will have theming and customization options. This is something we could see in iOS 16, maybe more integrated into the OS itself. So all of those things are coming soon. I would think they're coming to iOS 15.6 before iOS 16, which makes me think iOS 16 is going to be much bigger than we actually anticipated. Now, as far as additional features and changes, that's really everything. Just a few things in the code and what I mentioned as far as accessibility coming soon. As far as known and resolved issues, well, that storage bug some people were saying was still there even on iOS 15.5. So let's go into my storage and my storage has generally been pretty low on my phone. The main problem is when it loads down at the bottom, it's using up a lot of storage. I even had one person mention that it was using as much as 80 gigabytes of storage. So that's something that it really shouldn't be doing. You'll see it loaded and it did take a while to load that time, but we'll let it load here down at the bottom. It's using almost 3.84 gigabytes on my iPhone 11 and the iPhone 13 Pro Max is still loading. So it's taking a bit of time here. So we'll give it just a moment, but in general, it really shouldn't be much different. I wouldn't expect any major bug fixes with the first version. So it's still loading on my 13 Pro Max. So maybe that's an additional bug that we didn't have before. As far as the phone getting too hot or overheating, it was surprisingly cool when I rebooted it and was starting to use the phone, checking out iOS 15.6. So it's staying nice and cool as far as that goes. Also, some people were having issues with Apple Music. Apple has not mentioned whether or not they've fixed this, but I've heard from a few people saying that it actually would stop playing in the middle of it. You'd have to close out of music, go back in, and then it would work again. So I haven't had that problem personally, but I know some people have. Hopefully they'll resolve this in the, in the future. Also, Apple did mention one thing that's a known issue, and that has to do with Xcode 13.4 being unable to prepare iOS 15.6 beta devices for development. So there could be some issues with that. And they say the workaround for that is use Xcode 13.3.1. And so that brings me to, should you install iOS 15.6 beta one? I would say at this point, there's not really a reason to do that. Apple has not said really what they've fixed in this, and there doesn't appear to be a whole lot in this. It looks like it's getting ready for accessibility features. So at this point, there's not a whole lot of changes. I probably wouldn't install it if you're happy with 15.5. I also wouldn't install it if maybe you were trying to get better performance or better battery life or anything else with 15.5 usually later betas or the final version will, will bring that. As far as battery life, it will take a few days to measure that. So I'll cover that in a follow-up video, but typically battery life is okay on 15.5. I'm hearing positive things from a lot of people. My battery health is at 100%. And if we go back to battery life, go back to yesterday, I only had three hours and 38 minutes of screen on time, eight hours and 15 minutes of screen off time with music. And again, I think that music bug is still there. So I used about 75% of my battery. I'm actually still getting through the day with about 50% left, but I do use my iPad quite a bit and also other devices such as a Mac as well when I'm working. Performance wise, it seems to be pretty good overall. And some people mentioned in my iOS 15.5 video that I should test out PUBG. So I'll probably do that in future betas. I have tested out Minecraft and things, but typically it seems to be pretty good overall. I haven't noticed any difference in performance, whether that be ProMotion on older devices or anything else. Performance seems to be what you would expect so far. And I would expect that at this point. I also ran benchmarks on my 13 Pro Max just for consistency to see what we get right away. And for single core, I scored 1,728 for multi-core 4,705. If we compare that with iOS 15.5 on May 14th, you'll see it's about the same for single core and it's a little bit lower for multi-core. This typically improves after using it for a few days while it finishes indexing in the background and sort of doing different tasks. Once those are complete, usually performance goes up since it's not doing tasks anymore while you're running the benchmark. Now with those additional issues people are having with iOS 15.5, many people suspect we'll have a 15.5.1 before 
iOS 15.6 or iOS 16. So if we do see that, maybe next week or the week after. At this point, we could have that any day now. Apple doesn't tell us when we're having that, so it's possible we could have one to fix some bugs and add additional security fixes, but at this point, we just don't know. Also, as far as iOS 15.6 betas, I would expect the next beta within a couple weeks. Typically, Apple will release betas every couple of weeks with the early betas and then change to a weekly schedule later on. Then we'll have iOS 16 beta one on June 6th, and we're expecting a lot of major changes and big updates. That's the latest thing we're hearing from that. And so it seems like since they're putting such little things or little changes within iOS 15.6, I would expect everything's being held for iOS 16 on June 6th. So that seems to make the most amount of sense to me. Hopefully we'll see some major changes with that. And so that's everything in iOS 15.6 beta one. Hopefully we'll find some additional things. And if you found anything, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper though, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.